How's your paddle? CNC here, Scott here again for CNC Labs. The weather has actually warmed up quite nicely this morning. It was pretty overcast and rainy, and now we have sunshine and beautiful skies. So there's probably gonna be some dogs barking in the background. There's probably gonna be some kids <laughs> barking in the background. You might see the occasional boat coming and going, but uh, by and large, we are still in business and, you know, forging forward. It just happens to be the thing I really like to do at the place I really like to do. So, ta-da! We are going to create, look at this thing, I got it in there. There we go. We are going to create a paddle or an oar for all your paddling purposes because you know what better thing to do across the lake than paddle. I created the model in Fusion, which is a little bit out of the ordinary for us. We usually use on shape, but I just wasn't feeling on shape and I kind of wanted to stretch my, my, my brain muscles. Oh, I just proved that I didn't do any of that, didn't I? <laughs> um, so really long story short on this one is uh, we know that not everybody has Fusion or has the capacity or wants to learn it. So we're going to give you three different size STLs that you can import at your leisure to see one, which one fits your, you know, your lifestyle the best. If you do want to know how to modify the fusion file it's actually super 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 simple again you can go in and you can play with all the stuff that i have in here but really quick and dirty if for some reason you do want to make one that's a different custom length you can just double click in the sketches right here on the shaft drawing you can see that there is a length in there a dimension you can double click it you can change your dimension to whatever you'd like you're going to finish your sketch and then you are going to grab the handle which is that guy up there you're going to hit the move and copy and you're just going to drag it up by whatever dimension you just made it taller or shorter by. Ta-da, and now you have a longer paddle. That was the fastest I've ever done anything. That's amazing. When the paddle project came into being and we thought about it, we were just gonna carve it diagonally because I have a 30 by 30 up here. We were gonna carve it diagonally, which gives you about 42 inches of length. Well, that's great if you're not of a very tall stature or if you need a shorter paddle, but, to me, again, this is very similar to the guitar thing. It didn't show off what the machine can do. So I know I didn't do it the easiest way. I'm well aware of that, um, but easy isn't always better and better isn't always easy. And so I decided to kind of say, let's, let's show what the machine can do and let's really show people they can customize it if they want. I guess the hardest part of this is not carving the model. The, the, the paddle is pretty simple. Where this one goes a little bit sideways and gets a little bit more technical tricky is we are going to be doing a two-sided tile. So we're going to have to carve one tile, slide, carve another tile, flip, carve one, slide, carve another. So it's just very technical. It's not actually all that difficult. It's just technical. And setting up the file is kind of what I'm going to focus on the most because truth be told, that is the hardest part of what we're doing. So over here in VCarve, you can see my preview. You can see that, you know, again, it's just a paddle. It's just some 3D tabs. There's nothing too crazy about it. Um, I'll pull up my 2D view because if you are anywhere near my age range, you will see this and you will fully understand where this is coming from. This is straight out of Scott's growing up. And you know, if you're paddling the school canoe, then you better believe that's a paddling. That's a paddling. Paddling the school canoe. Oh, you better believe that's a paddling. Uh... <laughs> Anyone my age or any Simpsons fan is going to love this and you don't have to include it. It's obviously optional, but if you do, it's just a little bit of fun sarcasm for you. I got dogs chirping in the background. Like I said, I'm not going to go into too much crazy detail about, you know, tool paths and settings. I will add those in the description like I always do. Um, but it's just the theory behind this tile and slide, or sorry, this, this flip and slide that we just want to make sure we have set up. Now, in previous videos where we did the guitar again, the guitar was just a, a carve one side, flip. Not terrible. We had some index holes, you know, we did it into the wasteboard and all that stuff. The signs that I've done have been tiles where it's a slide, not too crazy, but when you combine them together, you just want to think a little bit and maybe plan a little bit better. Little bit better. Um, ultimately, you don't have to do the index holes where they're recyclable, but I kind of wanted to because it was dimensionally easy enough to do and it saved drilling extra holes in my wasteboard and stuff. So we have a 48 inch file document size, half of 48 is 24. So we put a little guide in there. Now this is my right off the bat, super fun, handy tip I didn't know before. If you right click on a guide, 
look at all the settings you have. I was so foolishly happy about this because up until then you got to drag them around and stuff. So in here you can obviously put your position, angles, locking, relative, absolute, fantasticalness. If you didn't know about it, you can just drag a guide down and then you right click on it and you can play to your heart's content. So there you go. We're going to get rid of that because we don't need it. Bye. Uh, our document setup is dimensionally what I had rolling around. Another tip that I found out kind of after, not I've not found out, but I realized is uh, you should probably be using some sort of decent kiln dried lumber for this. I just went to the big box store and bought some, some, you know, uh, I bought some, it's supposed to be two by eight, but they actually gave me two by 10 by accident. I didn't realize till I got home, but uh, it was just spruce off the shelf. It's still pretty wet. My paddles might warp, um, but if you can find kiln dried, it will probably save you a lot of headaches. Set my document to the size of that. I did my, you know, usual two side. Here's my datum. Here's my flip. We hit okay. Yep, yep, yep. It's gonna tell me it's gonna cut through because we're gonna cut through those are index holes. So like I said, uh, the, the actual, you know, importing of the model and setting up of the document size and all that stuff, there's nothing too complex there. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. Um, you know, you go into your modeling tab, you import your component. I selected my paddle. You can select whichever one you want. Um, it's going to give you all your usual options, you know, your X, Y, and your Z, uh, your rotation, and you can play with that to your heart's content. If you want to skew it a little bit, you can knock yourself out or you can just use the files we're giving you. From there, um, I used my vector boundary to create the vector that I'm going to use to carve out from my 3D roughing of my finish passes. Uh, ba -ba -ba, uh, ba -ba -ba. I'm making lots of noises because I don't know what I'm talking about. So you've got your model in there. Um, again, you can create your 3D tabs. Uh, this is, I didn't show you this one earlier because I was a little embarrassed by it, but you know, the front side of this one, this was, th I knew this was going to be a tester going in because this big ugly crack was big and ugly. And while it doesn't affect the functionality of being able to paddle, it looked ugly. So it was my good tester. Now, the problem with this one was I had some tabs that were here. They were kind of, kind of wimpy. And this is what happens when you use wimpy tabs. See wimpy tabs? Skinny wimpy tabs can come back to bite you. What happened here was I had some skinny wimpy tabs on it and it actually, while it was cutting out the 3D model, it went through the tabs to the point where there was nothing left. And this wood had enough spring in it that it wanted to curl up and I tried to reposition it. I stopped it before it got too far. I could have salvaged it, but I obviously didn't salvage it quite properly. So that was a good tester. I went back and I added some super meaty tabs. Um, overkill, 100%. Um, you can see in the file here that if you do want to change the size of them, you just go in and do, do, do. There you go. You can go in, you can change the thickness and the shape height and everything else. You can change the position. Um, obviously mine worked. They are crazy overkill. I'm going to have to do some sanding. That's why I left them in so you guys could see that. Yeah, Scott got a little frustrated because that was actually the, 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 the one that I showed you that was messed up. That was the second one that happened and I learned my lesson and said, I'm going to show you who's boss. So I threw in some really meaty ones. They don't need to be quite that meaty, but to make sure I didn't make three pieces of firewood, only two, I went there. So there's your tabs. Nothing too crazy, you know, this is the usual rectangular. I'm not connected to the internet right now, so I can't show you where I got them from, but it's just the usual ones within the clip art tab. Oh, I can't show you. I just can't download them. Okay, regardless, we grabbed some tabs, we threw them in there. We set them in position and where we wanted them and everything's pretty good. Our tool paths were pretty straightforward. Again, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm not trying to buzz through this, but I am trying to keep it a little bit shorter and sweeter because if we're gearing this towards those kind of intermediate advanced people, you already kind of know how to do these things. So I'm hoping that I don't need to give every single detail about it. Now, feel free to comment in the bottom and all the things and let me know, hey, Scott, we do need a little bit more detail still. And for the next one, we'll hit it and I can try and fix this one up. So after you import your model, I created my, where'd I go? Index holes. So the index holes were same as the guitar body where um, we have our material and we're going to put some index holes in it. Uh, the difference between this and the guitar body is instead of we just drilled, we just carved in a little bit with the guitar body. This one I actually carved all the way through right into the wasteboard. So I carved through the thickness of the paddle material and into the wasteboard a little bit. And I did that because it allows me to flip both ways instead of kind of like, oh, I have to drill four different sets of holes. So that's what you're seeing here is, so our index holes go all the way through our material and into our wasteboard. And I did that again so that when we're sliding it, because we are tiling it, 
um, I could reuse the holes over and over again, which is also why they are laid out the way they are, which is going against everything I talked about in the guitar where I said purposely put them in offset position so you can't screw up your flip. Well, now I'm breaking that rule because they are literally in the exact same dimensional positions, but I did that again so that you can recycle it because it's dimensionally symmetrical. So we got 24 and 24. The index holes are in the same spot so that when you carve out the first part, which we'll go to tiling in a second and you'll understand, after you do that and you pick it up and slide it, those holes line up with the ones you've already done. And then when you flip it, it's the same thing. So your holes are all lined up. That's why I did it the way I did it. So if you look at my file, they are equidistant, right? These two, these four holes, this sets a hole is the same as these ones for that exact reason. Tile tool paths. And when you bring that guy up, you get the tool path tiling manager. And if you haven't experienced tiling, again, it can be a little daunting, but by and large, it's just breaking down uh, a larger carve into smaller carves. And you can delineate, you can uh, tell it what dimensions and which way to slide and what you're doing, dependent on your project. For me, when I clicked on tile tool paths right there, it was feed through Y because I have a long piece and I'm gonna slide it this way. If you were going wider this way, or I, if you had a big enough machine, I, no, you can't You can't slide that way, can you? Because you're gonna bump, you could, but why would you tile it if you got a big enough machine? No, it's only this way. For me, you can set your tile height, and you can already see over here on the right that it's delineating T1 as tile one, and over here, T2, tile two. So I have told it 24 inches, because that's where I want it to go. I've given it an overlap of three quarters of an inch, because I wanted to make sure um, when I do slide, if it is off by a little bit, it'll kind of, you know, massage it, make it work. And there's just some overlap there. So it's not like a weird ring or anything like that. If you change your dimensions or anything in here, you can hit update tiles and it will update them. Uh, I have no need for smallest tile first because they're equal. You can delete your tiling data and then you can come down here and you can look at your active tiles. So you can see if I click on that, T2 becomes activated. If I go here, T1 becomes activated. If I go there, come on now, there we go. Uh, drawing tool paths in the original position for visualization, I had checked on because because the dude on the jet ski doesn't understand what the marker boys are for. Deep breath, Scotty, deep breath. I have this checked on and I have this checked on because basically if you think about it, if this is your tile, right, or this is your full piece and you don't have this selected, it's going to preview both things like this. They're going to overlap. That would be kind of hard to see what's going on. Whereas if you tell it to basically pretend then it will visualize it properly, and then you're not confused. You can hide the tiling manager, and at any point if you need to bring it back up, you just come over here to your tool paths, go to your tiling manager, and clicky-clicky if you need to do anything. Uh, it will add a precursor to your name of your tool path to delineate which tile it has saved, because it automatically breaks it down for you. This is why um, tile, the tiling manager is super handy, because yes, you could create this manually and move things around. The tiling manager, after you've set your tiles, automatically breaks it down when you save your tool path. So that's super handy because you just have to know what you're carving and it will automatically break it down. Boom. By using the index holes, I'm using those to help me slide my tile. If I only carve the bottom four index holes, right? One, two, three, four. When I go to slide, I don't have anything drilled into my top ones, do I? So I don't actually have anything to slide to. And when you're just normally doing slides without index, uh, without flips, um, it's pretty basic. You can just, you know, leave a mark that you're offset. If it's 20 inches, you mark 20 inches and you slide by 20 inches. It's much more straightforward than this. Um, but because I'm doing tiling and flipping, I wanted to make sure that when I tiled, I also was keeping everything lined up. So I actually ignored the tiling pass for this and I, drilled the six holes here first so that when I slide and it's going to be hard to tell on my screen we may have to do <laughs> we have to do an animation or something fun um I had these two holes at the midpoint the upper midpoint I guess you could call it in there so that when I slide my tile you can see that this guy here will slide right into that guy there and the same for this guy right so I have a reference point and it makes sense then we can drill these two up here they're a separate tool path and we have both our tile and our flip taken care of. Tiling is lovely. It's gonna automatically save them for you, but for these index holes, just because I wanted the tile and the index for the flip to reference each other, basically, I overcomplicated it, but I simplified it at the same time. So this is really simple. Give me this guy. 
It is literally just a 2D profile toolpath. It's cut to two inches because my material is an inch and a half plus a half an inch into there. It doesn't need to be very much. It's inside. Uh, I ramped it and then I named it with my usual naming convention, which keeps things in order when I go to cut them. And when we're tiling, that becomes almost more important because it keeps it nicely ordered for you. So boom. Here, do I talk about this before? You know, I'm gonna talk about the saving of this toolpath just because it's specific. So for the rest of them, the tile stuff happens automatically. It's great. For this one, when you go to save your toolpath, you'll see right here, output tiled toolpaths. If I leave that checked on, it's going to create tile one right down here, and it's gonna create tile two up here, which doesn't really help me because in order to, to slide it, I need those holes to already be there. So we can override the tiling for this toolpath only. It's gonna tell me that it may mess up with your stuff and I already know, that's why I'm saying okay. And it's just a normal toolpath. It's gonna to drill six holes, it's gonna carve six holes so that when you slide it for the first time, you've got reference points. Aces, that's done, cool. For everything else, it's pretty straightforward stuff, right? We got my 3D model. That was just a typical roughing toolpath. Uh, but, but I'm gonna go into it and we use selected vector on this one because I wanted to keep it bound to that. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Boundary offset is the width of my bit. It's a quarter inch ball nose is what I used for everything that was big and chunky. Um, obviously Jasper here was a 30 degree V bit. Everything else was quarter inch. Even my, my index holes, everything was a ball nose. Just like for the guitar body because I learned I could do it. The only other setting that I've changed on this was uh, I turned profile to none. And I believe that it saves a whole bunch of time of going, like when it's doing your roughing pass, and it's, there's these little kind of wispies that are left behind, it would usually go around and clean them up. By putting that to none, it doesn't clean them up. It saves time because it's a roughing pass. Who cares? That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. I'm ramping my plunge moves. I'm calculating. Good. Same thing for my finish tool path. I have my model selected. I am selecting the vector as the outline is my boundary. That's all good. You can see that I haven't touched these from my usual. Uh, why is it called 3D Finish 1? That's weird. Oh, because I clicked on it. Because <laughs> if I click on this one, it's different. There we go. Yep, everything else is the same though. Quarter inch ball nose. Cool. Jasper, this young, handsome looking fella. He's on the front and the back. He was done with a 30 degree V bit. Uh, and they are actually, uh oh, I can't remember if I did. Yeah, I did my usual cheat. I, <laughs> I didn't use V bits because I, I didn't use a, a V carve toolpath. I used a profile and I did that because then I can go right on and I don't have to worry about delineating how thick it is. I can just mess with the depth. Louis, B roll me. Obviously Jasper has not been compressed aired out, but my carving looks pretty spiffy. I know it's not an actual V-carve toolpath, but it turned out pretty good. Bit of a cheat, bit of a workaround. Uh, 16th of an inch deep, 30 degree V-bit, on, ramped, named. The only difference between that and the words where I did use a V-carve toolpath, a flat bottom depth of that is 16th. Uh, I start depth it a little bit down just to save some time on movement. I don't, actually, I think that's inherited. I don't actually remember doing that. I'm pretty sure that's inherited from the last project. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it's already carved down. You could actually start that even lower if you wanted to. Um, oh no. <gasps> Scott, you fool. Man, I'm not making a confessional for this. I just screwed up. <laughs> oh, I was totally thinking something different. Nope, that actually made that deeper. I was wondering why he was carving so deep. I just missed that. So it's not actually a 16th deep. It's actually closer to like 0.7 deep 0.07 so it's more than a 16th which is why this should should have been zero i'm a fool yes and i have it on footage so yeah i i shouldn't have started that so deep it's not a big deal we're all good to go we calculated and that's another index hole which i'll talk about in just a moment will i talk about it in a moment i'll talk about it right now because it's has to do with all the other stuff so like i said there it is there are those two little guys up there the six down here were carved again so that you can have your flip and everything's good. The two upper middle ones are so that when you do your first slide, you have an index hole to reference. It's a reference point. Now this is just creating the final two index holes. You can't obviously create 
um, those ones on the initial carve because it's not 48 inches deep. So it would run off the end of the thing and it would do the weird grinding motor thing. And if you want to know how I found that out, ask me because I did it once by accident and I lost my zero and it was a mess. So that's why that is its own little independent guy. You will not carve that until after you have made your slide. The back is identical to the front. This path is in here because I thought I was going to need a profile, but I didn't, but I'm still leaving it in there just in case you guys want it. But it's the exact same thing. It's a roughing pass. It's a finish pass, both with the selected vector. It's Jasper, identical to the other side, only flipped, and the message has changed because you better believe that's a paddling. And tool paths are basically done. So again, I'll throw my settings in the description or in a document so you guys can see what they were. I ran this sucker hard. I'm not going to lie. I'm usually very conservative, but I maxed this thing out both in V carve in the, um, the numeric value and in G center. I was given her, I think it was running 150 inches the entire project, uh, with the quarter inch bit because they're pretty robust. Um, but again, you'll see my settings. I just let her fly. There was nothing, <laughs> there wasn't being gentle with this one. Uh, I mean, yes, obviously we can preview our tool path and you can just go through. That's nothing out of the ordinary. I don't think I need to run through previewing it because, you know, everything's good. The only other thing that I changed that I forgot to mention earlier was, what are you trying to tell me? That's literally what I'm talking about right now. I did talk, I, I talked about the tabs earlier, but what I didn't talk about was I changed their, uh, I changed their, whatchamacallit, their combined mode. Usually it's merge. I changed them to add. There's people out there who know the software inside and out better than me. So what I found, if everybody remembers the guitar video, if you've watched it, if you haven't checked it out, there's the link over there. Ha, got it in the right spot. <laughs> um, I created a, a profile tool path. And part of the reason I did that was to not cut out my tabs. Um, it was also because I wanted a nice cream, nice cream, nice clean profile tool path all the way around. I found, and perhaps it's just because I have my wood dimension wrong, which I don't think I do. I'm pretty decent at that, that by changing them to add, it allowed them to become part of the 3D model. So it actually carved them and carved out around them for me. So I didn't have to create a specific profile tool path, which was lovely because it just saved a whole bunch of time in the creation process and the loading file process. So they are set to add, combine mode, add. Other than that, we're going to go save our tool paths. I am crushing through this. I hope that it all makes sense. And if not, then it's Louis's fault because he's here and he's distracting me. Uh, we're going to go to our front side. There we go. Front side. There we go. And we are going to save our tool paths. Now, this is where we're going to talk about tiling again, because if you have this checked on, it is going to automatically take this 48 inch piece and it is going to delineate it into the it's going to delineate it to the dimensions we already told us. So 24 and 24 with a three quarter inch overlap. So you will see, and I'm actually gonna save it to a new folder. I don't usually show saving my tool paths, but because this one's different, I'm going to. So again, I've got my naming convention. These are both quarter inch ball nose, so I'm gonna save them together. You'd go there, you're tiled. Because of the same, you can do this. You can hit save. And I'm gonna to go to G code and I'm just gonna create a new folder called X because I'm gonna delete it after. In here, you'll see that it gives you the usual option to name your tool path because I'm doing B and C together because it's, it'll do the roughing and then do the finishing right afterwards. I'm going to say B and C roughing and finish. No capital I bro. Finish. Okay. So that's going to name my tool path. Now you're going to be like, okay, what are you talking about with this, this, this tiling thing? As soon as you hit save, I'm going to open up my folder here. I'm going to go into the X, but bam, it automatically automatically created tile one and tile two. Like we were talking about, it will automatically do that for you. So you don't have to guess as long as you tell it what you want it to be, it automatically does it. It will do it for everything. And it does separate the roughing and the finishing pass into two different tiles. So it will do tile one roughing tile one finishing. You'll slide it tile two roughing tile two finishing. So that's why I say this project itself, a paddle on its own, is not overly complex to carve. But when you start adding in flips and slides, technically it becomes a little bit more tricky. That's all it is. You guys can do it. I have all the faith in the world in you. Jasper, I don't know, right here. Ha ha. This shows you how smart the software is. I'm going to do both Jaspers at the same time. They're both 30 degree V bits. I'm going to hit save toolpath. 
I'm going to call it D and E, and I'm going to say Jasper because they're all Jasper. Watch what happens on this one though. Ready? Boom. Tile two for Jasper. Because it knows that there's no data in the other side, it only does it on one side. So it only it still gave you the delineation, but it didn't actually create two different tiles because there's nothing on both tiles. It's that smart. It's genius. Index holes, we would turn this off. It's gonna give me a, an error and we're gonna say okay and we're gonna save the toolpath. This one is just straight up. Because we turn off, oh, hold on, wait a minute. Memory's coming back, I just did it yesterday. Hold on, hold on. Save, because I turned off tiling. It should come up without it. There it is. So I actually went in and manually renamed this one, T1 underscore, because I wanted it to stay consistent with my naming convention. Well, yes, it was there. That was a naming convention, me being a little tweaky thing. Same thing for this guy. This one, we are going to turn tile toolpaths back on, and you're just gonna say, Scott, why? And I'm gonna say, because if you don't, it is gonna save that toolpath at 47 inches long. Well, that's no good to us. We want it to be at the slide depth, right? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna open up G-Sender and show you why we have this checked on. So we're gonna hit save toolpath. Because we have it clicked on, it's gonna give the delineation, save. Mm -hmm. See, gave it a T2. And over here in G-Sender, what is going on? Uh, I don't need to connect. I am going to show you that, actually here. Oh, I'm even smarter than I thought I was. I'm gonna show you both. Save tool path. This one's not gonna give it delineation. Now you're gonna see what's going on. Da, 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 da. Refresh. So, here is with, yeah. This is with tiling checked on zero. 24, right? So that's why we do that. If we load the one, I don't want to use the mouse pointer instead of my fingers. They can see what I'm, <laughs> I do that all the time, buddy. It's part of the charm. So zero, 24, that's slid down. That's great. Here's what happens if you don't have that checked on. Where'd it go? Oh, cause it's still in the other folder. <laughs> oh goodness, Scott. Some days I wonder about you. As I said, here's what happens if it's not. Look at that. It's way up there at 47. So you'll be down here, but you need it to carve here, but it thinks it's way up there. Oh yeah, sorry. It's way up there, right? So that's why we check on tiling for that one and not the first one. It's a little confusing, but I promise if you are able to make it through my talking, you will understand what's going on. Backside is gonna be more of the same thing though, guys. Like it's, it's this was, that's why I say, from a carving standpoint, this is not a complex project. From an importing and you know creating tool paths, it's pretty straightforward. It was this technical stuff on this side, the, on this side of things that made it a little bit trickier. So again, we're gonna make sure that we have our output tiled tool paths on. We are now on our backside. It is going to create the roughing and the finishing. We're gonna save it into the correct folder. I'm gonna again, just rename it A and B roughing and finishing so that I know it's both, I know it's capitalized, I don't care now. I hit save, and then when we come into this X folder, you'll see that it is created. I didn't mention that two for me is backside. Do I wanna explain this? All the tile ones are gonna be tile ones, and then the one delineates that is on the front side. Uh, I believe there's actually, yeah. You could just add the side to file toolpath name too if you really wanted to. I like using ones and twos because that's just how my workflow has gotten where one tells me it's the front side, two tells me it's the back side. So that's why I have things named as, if you look here, one, they're all ones. So you're gonna add a T1, one, and a T2, one, because that's the front side of things, tile one and tile two. And then on the back side, you're gonna get the same thing. You're gonna get a tile one and tile two, but everything will be twos. So that tells me it's the backside. So it works for me. If it doesn't work for you, you are happy to click on this little add side to toolpath name and it will add front or back to it. That's probably simpler. I'm set in my way, so I'm not changing it. <laughs> uh, that's about it. I, I, I think Louie might be right that cutting out all the step-by-step -step stuff really made this fast. I mean, you guys are going to be the judges of whether or not you like how I went through this. Now, I will say, I, I know I speak quickly, so hopefully uh, I didn't speak too quickly and you were able to understand what I went through. 
If you like the kind of condensed version, but you would still like me to slow down, let us know in the comments, because I'm not perfect and I'm well aware that I can always make this stuff better. If you're good with it, let me know too, because it's nice to hear nice things, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So that's about it. We have imported our model, we've created our tool paths, we have added some tabs and played with them, got our tiling set up and rocking. Hopefully that was pretty straightforward. Uh, we've saved our tool paths with the tiling included and excluded, and I've explained my theory on that. Next, we're going to run over to my Littlest Workshop. Oh, I might call it that, that's pretty awesome. The Littlest Workshop where uh, my 30 by 30 set up and I will probably just roll with some voiceover and some B-roll of what I'm doing because it might be easier than me talking through it and the visuals are more helpful. So hopefully this part was nice and clear. Uh, if it's not, let us know and we'll do our best to fix it up. And while you're leaving a beautiful comment of how awesome I am, <laughs> make sure you're liked and subscribed if you're enjoying what I'm doing and hopefully you are because I have a fun time doing it for you guys. So we're going to hop over to some actual carving and I will see you in the Littlest Workshop. We start off with, you know, our blank wasteboard. Just like cornhole, I used a quote unquote slide guide, aka a piece of wood, to make sliding my project material easier. I made sure it was squared to my machine before screwing it down. The project material is placed against the slide guide and screwed into place. I drew reference lines on the slide guide and the wasteboard from the project material 00 to show the amount of slide needed. For this project, it was 24 inches from the project material 00. If you haven't already, now is the time to mount your outer bit. Find your 000 and you are ready to start carving. Like I spoke about in the tutorial earlier, the first file run is the six index holes toolpath. They are carved all the way through the project material into the wasteboard. These will be used to both line up the project material for the slide and for indexing the flip. Now it's time to carve the front, bottom, roughing and finishing passes and any other fun additions to your paddle that you've chosen. Remove the screws from the project material after the carving is done and the project material itself. Insert dowels or whatever you're using for index plugs into the bottom two index holes. You only need the bottom two at this point because there are no holes in the top of the project material yet. That's coming up soon. The project material is lined up with the inserted dowels and slide amount is double checked against the reference line drawn on the slide guide and the wasteboard. Screw that project material down. Then we'll carve the top two index holes in the project material. These don't go all the way into the wasteboard because they're only used for indexing the flip to the backside. Let her rip and carve the front top roughing and finishing passes. Remove the screws on the project material. And now is time for the exciting part. Flip that project material. Insert four dowels into the index holes and align the project material to them. Screw that project material down and carve your back, bottom, roughing and finishing passes and any extras if you went there. Repeat the front slide process. You can choose to use four index dowels to line up your project material if you'd like, but it's not necessary. But bam, you've got yourself a paddle. There you have it, folks. We have learned all kinds of cool new moves this one. We've learned about flipping. We've learned about sliding. We've done some 3D models. We've done some nice, you know, inlays and I think that uh, this thing looks fantastic and the fact that it is double-sided makes me absolutely thrilled. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Cottage Country CNC. We've got a couple more episodes coming at you. Uh, we're not sure what we're doing yet, but hopefully they are informative and fun and you're enjoying them just like we are. And uh, you know, make sure you're liked and linked and subscribed and dinged and all the things and all the fun stuff. And uh, you know, for the time being, I'm gonna go do some paddling. So we'll see you around the CNC. <laughs> Oh man, do 
I need to talk about tiling first? Okay, they can go together. You're right on that one. Thank goodness for Louie. This is super annoying. Enjoy the show, folks. I hope they feel better. Oh, I made a mistake already. <laughs> oh, this is going to be so confusing. I probably made that crazy confusing. It worked, though. I mean, maybe I overthink things. That's a definite possibility. Louis laughing at me because he knows that it's true, but... It was the first thing that you told me this morning. <sighs> so, 